everyone. In today's video, we're going to go over the CUDA software, Infinite Algebra 2, free worksheet, permutations versus combinations. I'll leave a link in the description below so you know how to access this free worksheet. Now, our directions for numbers 1 through 4 are to simply state if each scenario involves a permutation or a combination. Remember, permutation, the order matters, whereas for combination, the order doesn't. So let's dive into number one as we think about this. Number one states that a team of eight basketball players needs to choose a captain and a co-captain. So would this be a permutation or a combination? Well, think if we had eight separate players. And let's say we chose Jamie and Danny. Well, Jamie being captain is different from Jamie being co-captain. So the order in which they're assigned matters. If this was just choosing captains, the order wouldn't matter, but it's choosing a captain and a co-captain, two very specific and different roles. Therefore, the order does matter, making this a permutation. Let's move on to number two. Number two states that Rob and Mary are planning trips to nine countries this year. There are 13 countries they would like to visit. They are deciding which countries to skip. So because they're just talking about which countries to visit, and they're not specifically talking about the order in which they're visiting those countries, this is simply a combination. Just a set of countries that they want to visit, and they're just trying to figure out which ones they're skipping. Moving right along to number three, it says the batting order for seven players on a 12 person team. Keyword here is the batting order. The order in which you choose someone matters. Hitting first is very different than hitting fourth. Therefore, this is a permutation. Moving on to number four, there are 45 applicants for three computer programmer positions. There's three positions, but the positions aren't necessarily specific positions. They're just computer programmer positions. So if I choose any combination of those 45 applicants, let's say applicant A, D, and G, well, that's the same as choosing applicant D, G, and A. The order in which I choose them doesn't matter because the positions aren't specific. Therefore, this is a combination. So remembering what we did up above, again, we're going to state if each scenario involves a permutation or a combination, but now for this, we're going to find the number of possibilities. So let's jump in for number five. It says, Castell and Joe are planning trips to three countries this year. There are seven countries they would like to visit. One trip will be one week long, another two days, and then the other two weeks. So because the trips are different amounts of times, the order or how those countries get assigned are very different. So the order does indeed matter, which makes this a permutation. Now, because it's a permutation, we're going to have to somehow figure out the different combinations. So because there's seven countries and they're trying to choose, here's one trip, two trips, three trips, that's going to be seven times six times five because the first slot, they have seven countries to choose from. The next slot, they have six countries to choose from because they already assigned one. And then the last slot is five countries to choose from. So six times five is 30 and 30 times seven is 210. So there's 200 different ways to plan this trip. And if you remember from our previous worksheet, we could also do this with a formula. Do you remember the permutation formula? So again, n p r is equal to n factorial over n minus r factorial. n is the total number and r is the number we're choosing out of that total. So there's seven countries and we're planning three different trips. So that's seven P 
so 7 factorial over 7 minus 3, which is going to give us 4 factorial. 7 factorial over 4 factorial. Remember how we write that? It's 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But really, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 4 factorial, so I could have just stopped there once I got that denominator. Cross those out. 7 times 6 times 5. That's our 210. Let's move on to number 6. For number 6, it states that there are 110 people at a meeting. They each shake hands with everyone else. How many handshakes were there? So think about it. If you shake a hand with a person, you're both shaking hands. So if Zach shakes hands with Aurora or Aurora shakes hands with Zach, whoever initiates that, it doesn't matter. They're both shaking hands. So this is a combination. So why don't we figure out how many handshakes there were by using our formula. For the combination formula, remember in CR, in choose R, out of the total number n, if we're choosing r, the formula is n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. So n, there's 110 people, so that's 110 factorial all over r. So choose what? Well, at any given time, two people are shaking hands. So that's going to be 110, choose two. So two factorial times 110 minus 2 factorial. This simplifies down to 110 factorial over 2 factorial times 110 minus 2 is 108 factorial. Simplifying down, 110 times 109 times, I'm going to stop once I get to 108 because if I continue on, that's the same as 108 factorial. And I'm going to put that over 2 factorial times 108 factorial. Cross out 108 factorial over 108 factorial because that's going to equal 1. And remember, 2 factorial is simply just 2. So if I divide 110 by 2, I'll get 55. So 55 times 109 will give me my solution. And that's going to be 5,995 different handshakes will occur at that meeting. Let's move on to our next problem, number seven. In number seven, it says you are setting the combination on a three digit lock. You want to use the numbers one, two, three, but don't care what order they're in, okay? So this is a little confusing because it says you don't care what order they're in, but that just means you don't care about whether it starts with a one, a two, a three, what the second number is, and so on. But a three digit lock, the order does indeed matter. If somebody enters in one, two, three, but you really set the combination up as two, three, one, they're not going to be able to unlock that three digit lock. So this is a permutation. And what it means when they say they don't care about what order it is, that simply means they have three numbers and they're going to choose all three of them. So this is going to be three P three, which is going to give us three factorial over 3 minus 3 factorial, n factorial over n minus r factorial. So we have 3 factorial over 3 minus 3 is 0. And do you remember what 0 factorial is? It's not 0, it's 1. So we have 3 factorial over 1, which is 3 factorial. That's going to give us 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. So there's six different ways they can order those numbers. Moving on to number eight, it says that a group of 25 people are going to run a race. The top eight finishers advance to the finals. So it doesn't matter if they finished first versus finishing seventh or even eighth, just the top eight are going through. So since the order doesn't matter, this is going to be a combination. And how many potential combinations are there out of the 25 different people only choosing eight? Well, that's 25 choose eight. So that's going to be 25 factorial over eight factorial times 25 minus eight factorial. 25 minus eight, 
is 17. So 17 factorial. Now, simplifying this down, I'm going to write out 25 factorial until I get to that 17 because 17 factorial will cancel out with 17 factorial. So I have 25 times 24 times 23 times 22 times 21 times 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 factorial. And that's all over 8 factorial, which I'll write as 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. And you can write the times 1 but it's not necessary, and that's all multiplied by 17 factorial. So my eight factorial times 17 factorial. I'll cancel out 17 factorial with 17 factorial. Now we'll be able to work this through. However, just to help us cancel some stuff out, five times four is 20, so we can get rid of that 20 in the numerator. Three times eight is 24, so we can get rid of the 24 in the numerator. 7 goes into 21 three times, so I'll make that a 3. 6 goes into 18 three times, so I'll make that a 3. And then 2 goes into 22 11 times. So you can see I've gotten rid of my entire denominator, and all I have left is 25 times 23 times 11 times 3 times 19 times 3. Entering that in on a calculator, we're going to get 1,081,575 different combinations or different ways to choose eight people from a total of 25 people. Let's move on to number nine. Number nine says that a team of 17 softball players needs to choose three players to refill the water cooler. This isn't position specific, so the order in which those three players are chosen doesn't matter. They're just going to all refill the water cooler. So that makes this a combination. And because it's a combination, we know what formula we're going to use. We're just going to simply do 17 choose three. Out of the total 17 players, we're choosing three players to complete the task. So that's going to be 17 factorial over three factorial times 17 minus three factorial, which is 14 factorial. Simplifying down, 17 times 16 times 15 times 14, and I'll leave that 14 factorial because I have a 14 factorial in my denominator, and also a three factorial, which is three times two times one. So three times two times 14 factorial in my denominator. Cancel out the 14 factorial, and then let's simplify it down a little bit more before I enter this into the calculator. 3 goes into 15 5 times, and 2 goes into 16 8 times. So this is equal to 17 times 8 times 5, which, entering that in, is 680. So 680 different combinations. Moving on to number 10, 5 out of 13 students will ride in a car instead of a van. We're just choosing the students. We're not saying where they're sitting in the car. So if you choose the first person and they automatically get shotgun, it doesn't really matter. We're just choosing them. They're not in a specific spot. So this is, again, a combination. And we know how to figure out a combination. It's going to be 13, the total number, choose 5 out of that 13. So 13 C5, 13 choose 5. That's going to be 13 factorial over 5 factorial times 13 minus 5, which is 8, and that's factorial. Simplifying this down, 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8, and that's the closest factorial to 13 factorial, so I'll stop at 8 factorial, all over 5 factorial which is five times four times three times two times one times eight factorial. Let's go ahead and cancel out that eight factorial right at the start. And then look here, two times five is 10 and three times four is 12. So that leaves me with 13 times 11 times nine. And that when multiplied is equal to 1,287. 1,287 different ways 
to choose five out of 13 students. Moving on to number 11, it says the student body of 10 students wants to elect a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. So being president versus being vice president is different. So the way in which we assign those students, the way in which we choose them, the order matters. Therefore, this is a permutation. So now that we know it's a permutation, let's go ahead and do the formula. It's going to be 10 P, well, because there's 10 total students, and how many positions? One, two, three, four. Four different positions, so 10 P four. So that's going to be 10 factorial all over 10 minus four, that quantity factorial, which is six factorial. Working this out, I'll have 10 times nine times eight, times seven, times six factorial, all over six factorial. Cancel out my six factorials, and then multiply out the rest. 10 times nine times eight times seven is equal to 5,040. So 5,040 is the solution for number 11. So think about that. Just out of 10 students trying to choose four different positions, there's 5,040. 40 different ways to do that. Number 12 says selecting which seven players will be in the batting order on an 11 person team. So reading this, seeing that keyword order, I automatically want to say that it's a permutation, but the way in which it's worded leads me to believe it's actually a combination because this just says selecting which seven players will be in the batting order on an 11 person team. It doesn't say selecting the order that the players will be in. Like for example, if you think back to number three, number three said the batting order for seven players on a 12 person team. This just says selecting which seven players will even be in the batting order. So this is actually a combination. And a tricky one at that because it totally seems like a permutation at first glance. But let's figure out how many different combinations there are. 11 person team choosing seven players. So 11 C7, 11 choose seven, that's going to be 11 factorial over seven factorial times 11 minus seven, which is four, and then the factorial of that quantity. Seven is the highest factorial in our denominator, so I'll write out 11 factorial until I get there. 11 times 10 times nine times eight times seven factorial, all over seven factorial times, I'll write out four factorial, four times three times two times one. Seven factorial cancels out with seven factorial. Notice that four times two is eight, so I can cancel that out in the numerator, and three goes into nine three times. So all I have left is 11 times 10 times three, which is 33 times 10 or 300. 30. And if, again, if we change the wording order up just slightly, saying selecting the batting order of seven players on an 11 person team, then it would definitely be a permutation, except it just says selecting which seven players will be in the batting order. It doesn't say that it wants that specific order. Therefore, it's a combination. Let's move on to number 13, the second to last problem on this worksheet. If you've found this video helpful so far, don't forget to leave me a comment and click that thumbs up button. But let's continue on. It says there are 15 applicants for four jobs, computer programmer, software tester, manager, and systems engineer. So right away, because we're assigning them to different jobs, not saying that they're all just a computer programmer or they're all just one general label, they each have individual titles. Well, this is going to be a permutation. And because it's a permutation, let's write out that formula. Out of the 15, we're choosing four to be placed in the jobs. So that's going to be 15 factorial, since 15 is in, and four is R. So 15 factorial over 15 minus four, which is 11 factorial. 
that's going to be 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 and I'll stop there because I have that 11 factorial in my denominator as well. Go ahead, cancel that out and then we just multiply the numerator or what's left of it, which is 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 to give us 32,760. Let's move on to our last problem. For number 14, it says a group of 45 people are going to run a race. The top three runners earn gold, silver, and bronze. So the way in which they finish the race actually matters. So this is a permutation. Permutation why? Because order matters. So now that we know that, let's finish this problem out to figure out the different possibilities. Well, if there's 45 total and we're taking the top three, 45 is our n and 3 is r. So we're going to have 45 factorial all over 45 minus 3 and that quantity's factorial. So 45 minus 3 is going to leave us with 42 and that's 42 factorial. So we'll have 45 times 44 times 43 times 42 factorial all over 42 factorial. Cancel out those factorials and you'll see we have 45 times 44 times 43. Using a calculator, we're going to get 85,140. So that's 85,140 different ways to arrange those three top people. And with that, we wrap up this video. If you haven't done so, don't forget to leave a comment below. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.